All right, welcome back, Crime Fighters. It's time for another edition of Calhoun County's Most Wanted, the program where you get to help make Calhoun County a better and safer place by helping us lock up the bad guys. And by us, I mean him. This is our sheriff, Matthew Wade. Good to see you, Sheriff. It's always good to be on the show, Chris. And, you know, we are a team, and there's no I in team, so it takes everybody. So and that team includes the people viewing it, at home. It take, means the people viewing at home and the citizens help us just as much as uh, or more than we help them, so it is a team, so mm -hmm. it, it's always good. So. And they've helped us uh, find several more people hey, this week. Never let us down, five arrested this week, brings our count up to 4,268 people put away, all because somebody wanted to get involved and help us out. Thank you so much. I didn't necessarily want to get involved, but they were willing to. They were willing to. And some of them get rewarded as well. We do have some, some cash get, rewards Some of them get rewarded, yes. And, uh, you know, Crime Stoppers is a different organization, but they call that tip into Crime Stoppers, and we submit it, and a lot of times they'll cut them a check. Absolutely. That's nice. Uh, let's talk a little bit about um, the upcoming election, and I know we've got a lot of different things that are going to be on the ballot, but one thing that a lot of people aren't aware of is an issue that directly relates specifically to Calhoun County. Absolutely. Uh, we have several municipalities that border Calhoun County. Uh, those in, one in Talladega County, a couple in Etowah County, and they have got where they'll come inside of the, the jurisdiction of Cal, they'll come inside Calhoun County and they'll start poli doing police actions. They'll do checkpoints, pulling people over, writing citations, and they're also charging them 1% on their power bill that goes to those cities that's not even inside our county. And these citizens didn't have a say or a choice in any of this. Now, it would be okay maybe if those municipalities would respond when the houses got burglarized or patrol their neighborhood to keep it from getting burglarized or answer any type of call for service, but they won't do that. They just tax them and they come write them tickets inside our county and then the sheriff's office, we still have to respond and try to cover that. I just don't think it's right. It's not been right. It's not something that uh, citizens have called and complained to me for, for a couple of years now. And uh, Representative K.L. Brown has got a law. It's going to be an amendment on the November 6th ballot. And I would encourage everyone in Calhoun County to vote yes for that so we can keep uh, these agencies that's not even from our county, these, the municipalities and other counties, from coming into Calhoun County, charging our, our citizens a tax without representation and, and, and policing them and giving that revenue back to those municipalities outside our county but yet not offering any services to help them when their house is burglarized or something is stolen. So it, it can be a little bit confusing where the police jurisdiction goes outside of the city limits. And that's a discussion we don't need to try to define sure. necessarily. But the, what the amendment is trying to fix is where you've got organizations from a different municipality that are outside of Calhoun are County doing things that take money from people in Calhoun County but they're not providing services absolutely. to Calhoun County absolutely and I support it um, I, I don't think they should be able to come in Calhoun County and, and tax our people and to, and, and to take money out to other counties without providing a service to our citizens. so your recommendation is to vote yes for vote this yes. Uh, amendment sure. uh -huh. Okay, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll have the first half of this week's lineup on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. And welcome to this week's edition of Calhoun County's Most Wanted. First up in our lineup this week, Samuel Hughes. Mr. Hughes, last known to be living in Anniston, he's wanted for a probation violation on possession of a controlled substance. And meet Karen Ambramsky. Miss Ambramsky, last known to be living in Anniston, she's wanted for failure to appear, possession of a controlled substance, possession of marijuana second, use and possession of drug paraphernalia, and obstruction of justice by using a false ID. And this is Catrell Hambright. Miss Hambright, last known to be living in Anniston, she's wanted for failure to appear on use and possession of drug paraphernalia. And we'd like for you to meet Richard Gaither, Mr. Gaither, last known to be living in Oxford, he's wanted for a bond revocation on possession of a controlled substance. Take a look at Kevin Bush. Mr. Bush, last known to be living in Oxford, he's wanted on a parole violation for theft of property first. 
And this is Amanda Carpenter. Miss Carpenter, last known to be living in Anniston, she's wanted for probation violation on possession of a controlled substance. And last up for the first half of our lineup, Harold Rhodes. Mr. Rhodes, last known to be living in Anniston, he's wanted for failure to appear on possession of a controlled substance. And that's it for the first half of our lineup. Stay tuned for the second half later in the show. All right, we are back, and uh, we'll have some more bad guys for you in just a few minutes, Sheriff. But uh, right now, we want to talk about uh, college. We got Both you and I have got kids that are going to be in college here before long. Uh, yes. Un you know, my daughter's a senior. It's kind of a sad time, but I'm happy for her. But it's, I, hope mm -hmm. she stays, I hope she stays local. I hope she goes to JSU. But she can go anywhere she wants. But, um, yeah. but JSU is a fine place. Reese will be heading off soon as well and not sure where he's going to go. But... Uh, uh, we do have from Jacksonville State University, Dr. Timothy King and Julie Nix to, uh, to talk about what our kids are facing when they go off to college because it's not just the reading, writing, and arithmetic, is it? No, no it's not. Um, it, I've been in higher education for over 25 years and uh, I have seen a significant shift in that time. Now, what I'm not going to say is that there are more people now who are coming into college and facing issues that weren't there 25 years ago. What I am saying is that the complexity of these issues that are presented to, 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 to college students uh, come about in a lot of different ways. For instance, uh, we have students who are coming to college and they already may have a mental health diagnosis. Well, 25 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, if I'm a college student and I go to the dean and say, by the way, I'm depressed or I'm having a manic symptoms, well, they just sent you home. We don't do that anymore. We welcome them and we have to prepare them and make sure they have the resources and the things they need to be successful. So there's a lot of different stressors. There's stressors with class. There's stressors with having to work more college students have to work now to pay for school than they did back when I was in school. I didn't have to work. I just went to college. Yeah. It's a lot of stress that's added to their plate and it creates some issues for them that may come up that Julie here can help address. Sheriff, now, if you had to work during college more, you might have saved you some trouble, shouldn't it? <laughs> it would have saved me some trouble, but you know, I did work some in college, but um, you know, well, it's one of the only way I stayed out of trouble. Oh, yes. But, you know, <laughs> and also we didn't have cell phones. I didn't have a cell phone until I got my first job. So, you know, we talk about mental illness, but there's all these stressors, you know, that device mm -hmm. that all these college kids have, high school kids have, is um, could have got me in a lot more trouble when I was a young man. So, Julie, when we send our kids off to Jacksonville State University or really any significant university, um, there are people there that are looking out for our kids, which is good to know. We worry about the cost of education, and, and certainly that is a, a concern for the two of us and lots of others. But there's a lot of things that uh, we don't always realize that we're paying for that, that uh, are very important for our kids. What, what services are we providing at Jacksonville State University? Well, um, all of our students have access to free counseling services. Um, so students can present, they can do an online request, they can come in, they can call and have an appointment with one of our counselors, usually within a few days. Um, we try to keep that wait time down. Um, and they also have student health services at JSU. So um, RMC is a partner uh, to JSU. and We have a nurse practitioner that's there all the time and a doctor uh, that cooperates uh, with her. And um, they can handle a lot of you know the concerns that students present. We may not think that our kids are going to need any of these services, but there, there's a major life change when you leave the nest, so to speak, and go off to a, to a campus where you've got all that additional freedom. Your parents aren't there beside you every day, and just so many things changing in your life. Most people are going to need some help in some way, whether it's a, a formal counseling session or not. What are some of the issues that, uh, that we see? Well, of course, there's the normal adjustment issues, you know, and, and you know, families are changing. When you're sending a child off to college, you know, that's, that's an issue for the parents a lot of times. And that's an issue for the child, you know, asserting their independence and going through those developmental milestones. 
They may have trouble like figuring out um, what they want to do, you know, with their life. They may find themselves in a major that they're not interested in and they don't know what to do. Um, so there's all kinds of peer relationships. Um, there's finding their niche in college. So we see all of those kind of issues in our student population. And they're not all negative issues, are no, they? A lot of it is is opportunities that they just don't know how to take advantage mm -hmm. of and, and you're able to help them move forward. Absolutely. All right, well, we need to take a quick break, but we want to talk some more about this. We will be back in just a moment. We will have the second half of this week's lineup and more with uh, Jacksonville State University here on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. And welcome to the second half of our lineup. First up this half, Nicholas Powers. Mr. Powers, last known to be living in Anniston, he's wanted on a bond revocation for theft of property first, times two. And meet Tabitha Bishop. Miss Bishop, last known to be living in Anniston, she's wanted on an order of arrest for child support, the face of a deadbeat mom. And this is Candace Rogers. Miss Rogers, last known to be living in Lincoln, She's also wanted on non-payment of child support and failure to appear on child support, another deadbeat mom. And we'd like you to be Makita Ragland. Miss Ragland, last known to be living in Anniston, she's wanted for failure to pay on writing multiple worthless checks. And take a look at Richard Wiseman. Mr. Wiseman, last known to be living in Anniston, he's wanted for failure to appear on possession of a controlled substance and possession of marijuana second. And last up in our lineup this week, Devious Wilson, Mr. Wilson, last known to be living in Oxford. He's wanted for failure to appear on fraudulent use of a credit card. And that's it for our lineup this week. If you have any information on the whereabouts of these folks, please give us a call at Crime Stoppers. That number, 256-238-1414. All right, we will have the Crime Stoppers segment of the show in just a few minutes. We'll talk about some unsolved property crimes in the area. Fortunately, Sheriff, not a very long list this week. That's good. That's yeah. good. We'll try to keep that down. <laughs> All right. But uh, right now, we've got some folks from uh, Jacksonville State University talking about uh, the ways that they can help our kids while they're off at uh, college. Dr. Timothy King and Julie Nix. And um, these kids need more than just professors that are teaching them the subjects. This is a whole different phase of life. And and we need to take care of the entire student. And you've got teams in place to deal with whatever comes up, including tornadoes. Yes, we do. Um, and Julie was a big part of that. Uh, if I could just say that, um, you know, when, when your question about, you know, what are we doing to help address the holistic student? That's what professors are doing now. It's mm -hmm. not just going in and teaching the class is we have to address the entire student from start to finish to make sure we're meeting their needs. Um, so for instance, when the tornado happened, I happened to be in Knoxville, Tennessee that night, um, uh, and we came back the next morning and it was devastating. So, thank God a lot of people were out of town. <laughs> yes, thank goodness. Uh, it really, really would have been horrendous, uh, even more so than it was. So we mobilized as quickly as we possibly could and uh, had a crisis response team. So this crisis response team was fairly large, but what Julie and I and some others uh, did for our students in terms of uh, uh, addressing uh, just basic needs was to participate with um, the city and the EMA at the uh, recovery area mm -hmm. there in the Jacksonville Community Center. And Julie can tell you more so than I can uh, the ty different types of issues that they addressed at that particular place. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of things that, uh, that you probably never thought you'd be dealing with, right? Absolutely. Uh, it was not anything that we anticipated, but uh, our community had already done a wonderful job, like United Way and some of their partners had already done a great job getting the Disaster Recovery Center set up. And so um, we, as students started returning to the Jacksonville area, because many of them were on spring break, we set up a table where we could help students, faculty, and staff. And I think it was so helpful to have that JSU presence there, because um, so many of them had questions about what we were going to do for the semester going forward. They were, they were concerned about their academics, even though some of them had lost everything. 
they still wanted to know how the semester was going to go and how their classes were going to go. And so we were able to connect them with important resources and then also you know, share information about how the academic year was going to finish out. Of course, it's not always big things like tornadoes. It's, it's the little things where you leave community behind, you, you start new communities, and a part of that is the student-led organizations on campus, right? Oh, yeah, that's so important, you know, for them to get involved. And they've got a lot of different groups. How, how many, do you know how many different groups there are on campus at JSU? There's over 100 registered student uh, organizations on campus. Mm -hmm. And so what are some of the different groups that kids can get involved with? Well, the SGA is the biggest one. Mm -hmm. and everyone's automatically involved in, with that. There's several uh, different uh, religious denominations that have student groups on campus, Catholics, Baptists, Presbyterians, Methodists, uh, Wesleyan Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, a college Democrats, college Republicans. I mean, there, it goes on and on and on. Um, and also there's a Fraternity and Sorority Live, uh, which is a fairly big deal on campus. About 10% of our population participates in that. So there's quite a bit. And it can be actually a little bit overwhelming, probably the, the number of organizations and the, when you're just looking at your life changing that much. Julie, how, how do you recommend a, a kid, what should they do their first year at Jacksonville State University? What are some things that they can do? Should they reach out to your office or how, how do they just start the process of making sure that they're touching all those bases? Well, the Dean of Students Office is where all the student organizations are housed, and they host events to connect students to, to organizations that they might be interested in. So that's a great way. I don't encourage students to get over-involved, you know, that first semester, but I do like to see them get involved because yeah. um, I think they start developing those relationships and those connections, and some of them may be far from home, you know, so that's really important. Mm -hmm. Anything else that uh, you think is important to, to let our students and parents know? Well, uh, I'll go back to what you just asked. Um, all the research demonstrates that students who are involved have a greater chance of being successful in college and persist. Mm -hmm. So, like Julie said, those connections they develop with other students, uh, they become more comfortable with what they're searching to do, and uh, then they develop a, a relationship and an engagement with the campus it becomes home. Mm -hmm. That's why you see about you know alumni who uh, come back and they want to participate or donate money or whatever it may be. They they developed a connection to that campus because of their involvement. So it's real student. It's real important that students get involved. Just like Julie said, just not overly involved. Yeah. Don't try when to bite don't. off yeah. too much. Yeah. But, you but can't find study. a few things that, yeah. that you can do, and then you got time over the four. Or Five <laughs> years. It's not a race. We'll just say that. <laughs> to, it wasn't for me. Anyway. Yeah, not for me either. A little bit of time to uh, to figure out which ones you like and add on and subtract and just go as you do. Well, thank you very much for being here and thanks for being there for our kids as they uh, they move up to that level. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. All right, and we will be back in just a moment. We will have the Crime Stopper segment of the show and our Crazy Criminal of the Week on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. And welcome to the Crime Stoppers portion of our show where we ask your help for our investigators on these cases. First up, on September 24th around 11.40 a.m., a lost wallet was picked up by an unknown white male from the intersection of 431 and 144 in Alexandria. The unknown male was driving a red Ford Ranger with a silver toolbox in the bed. And on September 25th, the car was broken into on Prickett Lane in Wellington. An unknown white male with a beard was seen by the victim's car before leaving in a white SUV driven by another person. And sometime on September 25th, mail was taken from a mailbox at a residence on Chakalaka Road. A small silver four-door car was seen at that mailbox. And also on the 25th of September, a rose gold diamond ring was reported stolen from a residence on Reed's Mill Road in Wellington. And on September 26th, the home on Alexandra Wellington Road in Wellington was burglarized. They got away with two televisions, an insignia tablet, and miscellaneous jewelry. And on September 27th, and again on September 29th, a storage trailer was broken into at a location on Alabama Highway 21 South. The suspect went back a second time and cut off a new lock that had been placed on the trailer after the first burglary. A metal detector, four guns, miscellaneous tools, and a PlayStation were taken from that trailer. 
And last up on your caseload, on September 28th, an automobile was broken into at a residence on Dripping Rock Road in Piedmont. And that's it for your Crime Stoppers cases. If you have any information on these cases, please give Crime Stoppers a call at 256-238-1414. Remember, we want your information and not your name. Stupid! You're so stupid! Sheriff, sure, if you ever show up to uh, some disturbance and when you get everybody settled down, you ask them what got this all started, and you're just like, seriously? All the time, <laughs> absolutely. Y'all are doing this over this? Okay, Roger Washburn has been arrested for assaulting a friend of his, a lifelong friend, they've been friends for over 30 years, and they got into a fight, and he ended up pulling out his pistol. He didn't shoot at his friend, but he hit him with the gun, and it went off, and he hit him with it again, and it went off again. Yeah, that's bad. They were fighting over a Bruno Mars song and what the name of that particular Bruno Mars song was. Was there alcohol involved? Alcohol or something else I'm willing to bet probably was. I do not know definitively, but yes. You know, <laughs> who cares? I mean, we see that all the time, though. You just go, who cares? You, yeah. You're fighting over this? Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. All Crazy. Right. That's all the time that we have for this week. We'll be looking for you again next week, but hopefully not in the lineup on Calhoun County's Most Wanted.